Hello, this is Mrs. Powermore, and I'm not in the art room at the moment. I'm at home, but I thought I'd bring you this art lesson from home so you could do some exciting art projects at home. So, this is my craft shelf behind me, and I'll be doing some projects for you so you can do them and then bring them in and show me. Okay, so. Some of you would know, or all of you should know if you've been learning art with me for a few years, that when we learn about the colour spectrum, colour being one of the elements of art, that we use something to help us remember, and that is Roy G. Biv. I'll write that down. It's R is for red, O is for... That's right, orange, Y is for yellow, and G is for green, B is for blue, I for indigo, and V is for violet. That spells Roy G Biv. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is we want to find things that we have at home that will help us make a rainbow and we can practice some of our skills. So with your sketchbook, I want you to draw big rainbow arches. So I've written Roy G. Biv down the bottom of mine and I'm just gonna do a half rainbow. You can decide to do a whole rainbow if you want to do that, but I'm just going to do a half rainbow, just like this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find around the house, you better ask mum or dad if it's okay, if they've got any newspapers or magazines or any catalogues or junk mail that's come in the letterbox that you might be able to use. You can also use food packaging, so anything in your recycle bin that might be an old cereal box or wrappers of a muesli bar or something like that, you can use those as well. So if it's paper or cardboard, we can simply do some ripping. So. For example, on this one, it's got some orange and some yellow and some red. So I can just take that page and I can rip some of the colours out with my fingers and get little pieces like this. What I'm going to do now, some of you might already guess, is I'm going to use those little pieces and I'm going to use a glue stick. I'm going to put some glue on my page that is R for red and I'm going to put some glue on there like that and I'm going to stick my little pieces of red that I found in my magazines on that and I'm going to stick it all across that rainbow. So I'll do a few more pieces of that for now just to show you. Here's a couple more pieces. And then I can do the orange. So I had orange on the same page. That's pretty handy, isn't it? Sometimes it's quite fun to look through the junk mail and the old magazines and you're not reading them and you're not looking at the pictures, you're looking at it specifically for the colour. So, I've got a nice pile of orange and I'm going to stick that down onto the orange. So I'll just pause for a minute while I do that. So here we are, I've done my whole orange. Now, I can wait until that glue dries and then I can use a texture or a pencil in orange and I can colour in between the spaces. So 
if you have if you do have some paint at home and that's okay to use you can put out some newspaper or a bit of plastic on the table and you can paint around it that can look really good as well but just coloring it in is great as well or you can just decide to leave it or do lots of little tiny bits of magazine as well ripped in there so lots of different colored papers and by the end of it you're going to have a beautiful rainbow Reggie Biv and it's called collage when we add all little pieces together to make a picture like that. So if you can fill the whole page with all the Roy G. Biv, and don't worry if you can't find the colour that you want in these colours, in these magazines, you can always use your coloured pencil or your texter as well. So once you've coloured it all in, you've got a beautiful mosaic. Now some people get a little bit confused when they get to indigo and violet because sometimes we go hmm, what a color does indigo look like so my advice is that when you get to blue that you're looking for a nice light blue color lots of sky or water pictures you might find in your magazines and light blue if you are looking for indigo then I would look for dark blues. Dark blues, kind of like my top. And if you're looking for violet, then you're looking for all those delicious purple colors that you can put in there. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time finishing my collage and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Now, if you haven't got any magazines, like we talked about before, and you wanna use old packets and things from the recycle bin, and they're a little bit harder to rip because they're plastic or different materials, then you can use a pair of scissors. Remember when you are walking around the house with scissors, just like in the art room, we carry them safely like this, that we don't cut anything except our work. So no haircuts for any younger siblings or brothers or sisters or cats or dogs or yourself. And when you cut, remember to use this part of the scissors, not just the little tip here. We wanna put the paper or plastic right down in this part of the scissors. We wanna make sure that our thumb is in the small hole and our other fingers are in the bigger hole. And we never leave them open lying on the table. We always close them and point them into the center of the table to make sure that someone walking past doesn't accidentally knock them and hurt themselves. So when you're cutting a curved shape, so I'll just show you with this bit, there's a nice curve here. When you're cutting a curved shape, move the paper rather than the scissors. So as I'm cutting, I'll show you on this, as I'm cutting, I'm actually turning the paper as I cut. But because you're doing a collage, you can decide to do lots of little triangles, cutting out lots of things. To save the paper, always cut from the edge. You don't need to do what some people do and cut into the middle and then cut out a little piece from here because you've just wasted a whole lot of paper doing that. So we can just cut along the edge first or this might be even quicker. Cut a strip and then you can cut that strip up into little pieces. That's a bit quicker, isn't it? Gosh, full of good tips today. Okay, I'm going to pause my video. I'm going to finish my collage and then I'll come back and show you how it went. All right, so I've finished mine. I'm pretty proud of that. And I found some green grass and some flowers and I found lots of pages just with color and I found some blue sky and someone's shirt was blue as well and I ripped that up. So really good. Now, you could decide to color the sky in. You could decide to do a little drawing of Roy G. Biff down here. As I said, you could wait for the glue to dry and come back to it later and color in between all your magazine to really make it stand out and pop. 
Lots of things you could do. And another fun activity that you could do is you could go into your kitchen and you could go around your house and you could try and list as many things that you could find that are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. It's like a Roy G. Biv colour scavenger hunt. You could go around and you could either count how many things, are there more red things in your house? Or you could maybe do a picture. So maybe it inspires you to draw lots of red strawberries if you find them in your fridge or your fruit bowl. Or maybe if you've got a little garden at home, you might like to go and see how many different types of colour green there are outside. I'm looking out my window over here. I can see lots of different shades of green. There's dark green and yellowy greens and light greens and dark greens and mint greens. Did I say dark greens twice? Hmm, getting confused. Okay, have lots of fun exploring colour, everybody. Bye.